I was young when I learned there was a difference between us and them. They have money, power, <laughs> but I have a secret that will expose them all. You can keep your seat at the foot of this table, just never forget who sits at the head of it. She's a disruptor. Take care of it. All right. Now, folks, I wasn't able to play the full trailer because it's like two minutes long. But I wanted to talk about something that people wanted me to give my two cents on. And that's the promo for Our Kind of People. And I watched, uh, about, I think, like two. Well, yeah, it was the two minute trailer. Then you had some like short promos here and there, which were kind of condensed versions of the trailer. A uh, few cast interviews, you know, introducing people to their characters. And I have to say. This looks like a great show. Um, it gives me a blending of like the haves and the have-nots, ambitions, a little bit of dynasty thrown in there. But the best part is, it's for black people anyway. It yeah, thank you, Kevin, on stage. But uh, I believe the show's kind of like all the Queen's Men is based on a book, our kind of people inside America's black upper class and. I think that I I don't think I need to do necessarily a shot by shot. Hey, this is what happens in the trailer. I do have notes in front of me, but I think I want to talk more about the meaning of this show. So the premise is it's set in Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts. The the series follows the journey of single mother Angela Vaughn as she sets out to reclaim her family's name. But she soon discovers a dark secret about her own mother's past that will turn her world upside down. And it's premiering on Fox, I believe, September 21st. Uh, episode 1 is entitled Reparations. And Episode 2, which airs on September 28th, is entitled My Mother, Myself. The cast alone, I, I feel like the same way about all the Queen's men. The cast alone is worth the price of admission, in my opinion. It's just the fact that you got Morris Chestnut. You got Lance Gross, a.k.a. Calvin from House of Pain. You have, uh, let's see. Well, Latoya Luckett was originally supposed to be in this show. Uh, Raven Good Goodwin, who played in, I forgot what show. Was she on, was it Glee or Good Luck Charlie? And I... Hang on, I gotta look it up. I'm sorry about this. I should have done the research. Um, yeah, she was on Good Luck Charlie. And if I remember correctly, she was on another show I used to watch. Hang on. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. It wasn't a show I watched. It oh, yeah, it was. Just Jordan. Duh, just Jordan. All right. So, with that being said, and that was just a few of the cast right there, but I think I'll, our kind of people is the kind of show that we need because not always well excuse me it's not you know a regular thing to see television shows depicting black people in this kind of arena i mean it's not uncommon like for example have and have not you have the harrington family but um they're kind of you know side by side with the criers but to have like, like a black show with a majority of the cast, the upper class, it's not that common. So a lot of the cast interviews talk about how, you know, this is maybe like the first show of its kind. Now, I can't tell you if that's a fact, but I do think that this definitely screams the crabs in a barrel mentality of when some black people make it to the promised land and then there are other people trying to make it as well. You know, they're going to kind of, you know, push them back down in the barrel as opposed to lifting them up. So I think that overall we're going to see, I know this sounds like a weird comparison, but seeing the kind of back and forth between Angela and Leah as the trailer went on, it kind of reminded me of like a uh, black mean girls. Now, as the premise suggested or basically explained, Angela has, uh, you know, kind of a dream to make it within this, black upper class elite sisterhood and she's a person who is inherent inheriting a property that her mother used to own and the thing is 
her mother has some sort of dark secret, some dark past. And, you know, it seems like there was some criminal activity, some shady things going on that her daughter never knew about. You know, we have some moments where uh, Angela seen putting a picture over other people's pictures on the wall, uh, writing lies. And I think lipstick or red paint on like different photographs. I think Leah's like family photograph. So it could be one or two things like, you know, given this black elite society, it could be a situation where perhaps maybe Leah's, I mean, Angela's mother was arrested taking the fall for one of these other families that made it to the top. And, you know, now Angela wants to kind of reclaim what's rightfully hers or to get revenge. Or it could be a situation where um, Angela's mother really was, you know, a person who got rich doing shady things. So due to her actions, it kind of put a, it kind of tarnished the Vaughn name, preventing them from being part of this life. Because uh, like the trailer said at the beginning, Angela talked about, you know, when she was little, she learned that they were like two different lifestyles. Those who have, well, she didn't say have and have not, but let's be real. Those who are rich and those who are not. So she wants to give her daughter, Nikki, a better growing, you know, a growing up experience than she had. So we just have to figure out exactly what's happening to Angela that will make her want to, you know, take her, I believe her product is a black female hair care product, you know? So basically that's kind of her shark tank invention that she wants to bring to the board to get funding for. And if she's invited to the sister circle, this could help her elevate to the next level. But Leah is that, you know, the mean girl who doesn't want other people to excel because maybe she knows about the Vaughn secret or it could be something that Angela has in her back pocket um, that could be used as leverage. It's like, oh, you don't want me here, but let me tell you something. I know something about your daddy. Uh, Leah's father, I believe, is Teddy Franklin, and she's married to Raymond DuPont because her last name is Leah Franklin DuPont. So it uh, looks like she's a hyphenator when she gets married. I think my favorite line of the episode is when Teddy says, you can keep your seat at the foot of the table, but don't you forget who sits at the head of it. So Leah is giving me the same vibes as Robin Givens character, I believe Stephanie on ambitions. So as a result, you could see Leah trying to i guess you could say get to the head of the table maybe it's like hey daddy you've been doing this for so long and me it's time for you to retire but teddy ain't ready hopefully this doesn't mean like you know teddy's going to get killed or something like that you know that way leah could usurp the um you know the head of the table but i feel like maybe she sees the potential in angela's product and the success of it and as a result she could be like, nah, she gets a seat at the table. I don't need any competition. So it could be one of those situations. But uh, we have Raven playing Josephine, kind of like the best gal pal of Angela, who even nominates her to join the sister circle. So I'm wondering what's going to happen there. Uh, we also see a couple of different potential couples on a relationship. Now, Angela's daughter's name is Nikki. And Quincy, I believe, is the son of Leah and Raymond. And it looks like uh, those two kind of hit it off at like a, you know, a fancy meet and greet. So it could be like a potential Romeo and Juliet thing between them. Uh, but also we see Lance's character, Tyreek, uh, checking out Angela from across the, not the, not across the room, but across the uh, yard. And it looks like those two have some hot moments as the series goes on. So I'm wondering, you know... Are we going to see situations where Angela might get exposed because she's talking about how she has to make it in the circle by pretending she belongs there? Like, I think there's one scene where she's taking like a red Sharpie and she's coloring the bottom of her shoes to make them look like red bottoms. So this could be pretty damn interesting how you have a character who is essentially a have not, but she has a secret that could have possibly exposed the haves causing them to lose it all. So this could either be the leverage needed to make it into this sister circle or this secret could be something that's so detrimental to her that it could prevent her from ever being part of said circle. So, um, really that's all I got. 
the cast itself, it looks great. The trailer looked amazing. So essentially, you have a person who's trying to better themselves, who's trying to fit in, but they don't come from a background of, you know, fame, fortune, and resources or capital. So, hey, I got a product. I think it could work. I feel like I'm the right fit for your sisterhood. But you have Leah standing in her way. So I think as the series goes on, we're going to see some more uh, depth to the story and characters as well as, you know, why are some of these characters kind of, you know, reluctant to add in Angela to the group? I mean, to be honest, based on the trailer itself, you got Raymond. He seemed cool. It's like, hey, keep up that uh, attitude and you'll make it into, uh, you know, the, the sisterhood or the elite soon enough but leah kind of gives that look so leah might know something or she just might not accept angela but on the flip side i feel like the series is going to show some secrets because when you think about it not all a lot of these rich people who get rich not all of them do so through there are some ill-gotten gains involved there are some shady activities so i feel like some people might end up getting killed as the series goes on but i hope people stick around long enough so we can see because they we got a talented roster of actors, and this show looks like it could be the next ambition, so to speak, and I'm here for it. So, with that being said, you know, you can kind of tell I'm slowly but surely trying to add in more non-Tyler Perry material to the channel, and if this goes well, maybe this could be the the Empire or the Star that I didn't review at first, but if my reviews do well then and the show does well this could be a hit not to mention this show could be the potential inspiration for a possible name change to the channel check out the community tab poll for that post and with that being said what do you think of our kind of people do you think it will make it past season one uh hopefully it does because like i said um the, the trailer looked good but let me know your two cents in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe. And with that being said, I will talk to you next time.